Hello, my name is Mark Stevens. I'm Professor of Public Policy at Harriet Watt University. Uh, next Monday, I will be rejoining my colleagues at Glasgow University as the McTaggart Chair of uh, Land, Property and Urban Studies. I've been asked to talk about um, the UK mortgage market uh, in the context of the coronavirus uh, crisis. I'm going to divide the talk into four sections. Uh, firstly, I'm going to talk about uh, context. Uh, secondly, I'll look at how the UK responded to the global financial crisis. Um, then I'll come on to how we've responded to the coronavirus crisis thus far. Uh, and finally, I'll make a few speculative suggestions about what we might uh, expect in the future, which uh, will hopefully inform uh, our discussion to come. The UK has experienced uh, falling levels of uh, home ownership uh, over the past 15 years or so, um, and in particular, falling levels of mortgage to home ownership. Um, so that's fallen by about 10 percentage points since before the global financial crisis, uh, so that now around 40% of people live in uh, households um, with mortgages. Um, that uh, puts us above the European average, uh, but below the levels of mortgage ownership seen uh, in countries in Northwest Europe and Scandinavia, uh, notably uh, the Netherlands uh, and, and Sweden. Um, and it's also the case that uh, mortgage debt as a proportion of national income uh, is somewhat lower in the UK now than it is uh, in countries like the Netherlands uh, and, and Sweden. Um, the other thing that's worth pointing out is that um, although home ownership still dominates uh, the mortgage market in the UK, uh, about a fifth of it is now accounted for uh, by mortgages taken out by uh, private landlords. In terms of context, it's also important to note that we haven't uh, returned to the levels of mortgage lending uh, or house prices that we experienced before uh, the global financial crisis. Um, so in real terms, uh, gross lending in 2019 uh, was about th a third lower than it was in 2007. Um, and in terms of house prices, um, in nominal terms, they have recovered across the country as a whole uh, to uh, 2007 levels and indeed uh, are above those. Uh, but in real terms, they're still uh, lower than they were in 2007. Um, so London and uh, a number of surrounding regions are the exception. Uh, London has seen an increase in real house prices of about um, a quarter since 2007. Uh, but in most regions in England uh, and indeed in Scotland, uh, real house prices are still lower now than they were in 2007. Um, that doesn't mean to say that uh, affordability uh, has uh, fully recovered, so that a natural uh, reversal in the decline of home ownership uh, can occur. Um, that's uh, uh, because most of the affordability that was lost was lost before 2007 uh, in the long house price uh, increase from 1994 to 2007. How did the UK respond to the global financial crisis? Um, well, unsurprisingly, um, bank bailouts, nationalisations and uh, restructuring of the banking sector were an important element to it. Uh, but I'd like to focus on how we responded to uh, individual uh, homeowners facing difficulty uh, paying their mortgages. Uh, back in 2008, there was a real concern that we were going to uh, see a repeat of the arrears and foreclosure crisis that we saw in the early 1990s, where in the worst year, um, 75,500 uh, households exper experienced foreclosure. In 2008, the government responded in two um, distinct ways uh, to prevent that kind of um, levels of foreclosure. Um, so first of all, the, the state safety net, uh, which had been weakened, uh, was strengthened. Um, so that uh, individual homeowners who lost their jobs or substantially lost income um, received more uh, support in making payments for mortgage interest. Uh, but the novel intervention uh, was the employment of uh, forbearance. Uh, this was exercised at uh, the individual level uh, in the courts. Uh, so if a bank uh, took a borrower to court for uh, foreclosure, 
um, they were expected to have gone through quite an extensive um, process uh, first to try and find every any alternative uh, to uh, foreclosure. Um, and those two uh, policies together seem to have been uh, pretty successful. Um, foreclosures peaked at about 40,000, uh, which is still quite high level, uh, but only around half the level that we experienced in the early 90s. Um, so the policies are generally regarded as having been quite successful. The context was also rather more favourable uh, in the sense that um, uh, we had moved to an era of ultra low interest rates. Uh, so in response to the global financial crisis, the Bank of England cut uh, the base rate from 5.75% uh, to 0.5%. Um, so it was a much more favourable context um, than in the early early 90s. Um, the Bank of England also um, moved on to uh, introduce quantitative easing. Um, so we had a, an extensive quantitative easing programme of in excess of £400 billion, uh, which ran up to 2016 and which has not uh, been reversed. And of course that policy uh, was designed to support asset prices and that of course includes house prices. Generally, um, I think uh, the global financial crisis was followed by a failure um, to undertake structural reforms throughout much of the British housing system. Um, the exception to that is in the mortgage market um, where we have seen quite important uh, regulatory change. Um, we had a mortgage market review uh, that led to the introduction of refined affordability tests, uh, replacing the rules of thumb uh, with residual income and uh, interest uh, stress tests. Um, and the effect of uh, the, the, these affordability tests also effectively removed interest uh, only mortgages. Um, at the macro prudential level, we also saw balance sheet restrictions. Uh, placed on uh, bank lending at high loan to value ratios. When we put uh, both the monetary policy uh, responses and the regulatory changes together, um, I think we have an explanation for the repatterning of the British uh, housing and mortgage market since 2008. Um, it helps to explain uh, how buy to let landlords were incentivized um, to either invest or increase their investments in private renting. Uh, it explains why they were able to access um, cheap credit, whereas um, would be for many would-be first-time buyers were unable to do so because of deposit constraints. Um, and I think it also helps to explain uh, some of the regional patterning of the um, housing mortgage markets. An indication of how uh, the market hasn't really returned to normal um, lies in uh, the continuation of the government's um, shared equity scheme. Uh, this was introduced in 2013 uh, really to support the house building uh, industry. Um, so under the scheme, uh, first-time buyers or indeed other buyers um, can um, benefit from the scheme uh, only if they purchase a new house. Uh, they need to put down a 5% deposit uh, but that then gives them access to a 20% equity uh, loan from the, from the government. Uh, now this scheme has assisted more than 200,000 households. Um, the government has put about £30 billion pounds into it. Um, and uh, an indication of how we haven't returned to normal uh, is that the, many of the large house builders are quite dependent on the scheme. Uh, so typically between a third and a half of their sales are derived from help to buy. How have we responded uh, to the coronavirus crisis? Um, well, um, the Bank of England has cut interest rates, as one might expect, uh, now down to 0.1%. Um, so, of course, one of the difficulties was that uh, interest rates never really um, were increased sufficiently after the global financial crisis in order for meaningful cuts to be made at the next, i.e. current, uh, crisis. Um, so it's unsurprising that the Bank of England immediately uh, resorted to uh, quantitative easing uh, with a £200 billion uh, programme uh, approved immediately. Uh, a term funding scheme was also introduced, uh, which is aimed at encouraging lenders to pass on rate cuts to, to borrowers uh, 
Um, and there's also been some easing of uh, balance sheet uh, requirements. At the individual homeowner level, uh, it's notable that the social security safety net has not been strengthened in contrast to 2008. Um, instead, uh, the government is uh, relying uh, almost entirely on forbearance. Um, and you, this time forbearance is not being exercised at the individual level uh, in the courts. Uh, instead, it's a blanket policy. Um, so lenders uh, must uh, provide mortgage holidays of up to um, three months. This has now been extended uh, for an additional uh, three months. Um, the scheme has been widely taken up. So uh, 1.8 million uh, people have taken advantage of it. Uh, that represents uh, about 16% of all uh, mortgages. Um, and of course, the, the word holiday is perhaps a, a little misleading uh, in the sense that um, the um, loans that are not being repaid um, are, uh, of course, accruing, uh, accruing interest. In terms of more general support uh, at the household level, uh, the government is operating a furlough scheme, uh, which is um, uh, giving employees 80% um, of their former earnings if they've been furloughed. Um, and the social assistance safety net um, has also uh, been enhanced by uh, £20 a week. What does the future look like? Um, well, uh, the Bank of England has issued uh, a scenario uh, that house prices may fall by about 16%. Uh, the Bank of England uses the term scenario um, where um, the assumptions uh, for a, a, a forecast are uh, in the um, extremely heroic uh, range. Um, but who knows? Um, a key uh, question that uh, we don't know the answer to um, is whether the recovery uh, will be a, a rapid one, the so-called V-shaped recovery, um, or whether it will be a, a slow and painful uh, recovery as we uh, saw after 2008, um, whichever route um, we uh, end up following, I think will be, will be crucial uh, to determining what the mortgage market will look like um, in the future. Um, but at a structural level, um, I think um, what we're seeing is an intensification uh, of the structural shift that occurred after 2008 in terms of the operation of uh, monetary policy. After 2008, uh, the notion that central banks were merely targeting consumer price inflation as their sole and overriding objective uh, really became uh, incredible, uh, particularly uh, with the introduction of uh, quantitative easing, um, which was targeted at um, asset prices uh, as a means of supporting um, economies. We see that uh, intensified, um, I think, with the coronavirus crisis, uh, to the extent that uh, quantitative easing is not only being reintroduced, um, but it's also being used as a, a, a means to, to fund government debt. And governments, um, that are acutely aware that electorates are weary of a decade of austerity, I think we'll find that um, to be quite attractive. So the way in which monetary policy unfolds um, and the way that impacts on housing uh, markets, um, I think will uh, be a very important determinant of how mortgage markets unfold. Um, and what it looks like, uh, as I've suggested, is an intensification of our experience post-2008, um, whereby monetary policy um, is playing a fundamental role in underpinning asset uh, values, uh, including, of course, house prices. <laughs>